Hi, this is Max from the Nanixis. In this video, I will give tips to advanced users to refine the animation when a problem occurred during the tracking and you're not completely satisfied with the final result. And we will also explore the solving options. That means that you should already be familiar with creating a tracking profile and a retargeting profile with Performer. If not, jump to our previous tutorials, creating a tracking profile with Performer and creating a retargeting profile with Performer. So, we'll see how to add a DXYZ button in the Maya interface as a shortcut, how to ignore part of the tracking with a padding block and modify the result of the 3D character by adding anchor frames and finally explore the options for solving. For this, you'll need a tracking profile, a retargeting profile, your 3D scene with your character open in Maya, 3ds Max or Cinema 4D. Before we start, I will give you a small tip to save your script so that you connect your 3D software with Performer quicker. Go to your Maya scene, open the script editor, type DXYZ bridge, and click on the icon here to save the script to the shelf. Enter a name and it will appear in the shelf with other shortcuts. Now click on it. The new window will open. Click on start. Move to the Studio panel in Performer and click on Network Configuration. You'll see that the port number is the same as the one in the Dynamics bridge in Maya. You can change the IP address and port in case the port is already taken by another software or Maya is running on another computer. Now you can go ahead and press Connect. You can now resolve your animation. So. While checking the tracking on a few sessions, I spotted few problems. In this session, for example, I am scratching my eyebrow. It impacts the tracking and you see it moving. If the tracking moves, the retargeting will move accordingly. So we'll check that in our 3D scene. See here, you have a little shiver on the face of my 3D character. I know this is an isolated problem since my retargeting profile is accurate. So, I will adjust that animation without re-editing the retargeting links. I will first highlight and ignore that part of the tracking by adding a padding block. To do so, identify where you start losing the tracking and when it gets back to normal. Enter the frames number in your timeline to identify the range and press the icon here to create a padding block. By doing so, the animation will ignore that part of the tracking see that part on the timeline just turned yellow. Now you can retrack and resolve your animation to see the difference. A padding block creates a kind of interpolation between the last frame tracked and the next frame tracked. I would like to adjust my animation to be more fluid. To do so, we will use what we call an anchor frame. The Anchor Frame tool is a tool that forces the key animation on the controllers of your character. Will influence the animation at the moment the tracking did not go well. To activate the Anchor Frames options, just be sure that you're in sync with your timeline in your Maya software. You can activate the timeline synchronization by clicking on this button. The Anchor Frames are pictured by the green cross right here. Move your slider where you want to adjust the animation. Now I will work in my scene in Maya and move around my controllers to match the facial expression. Once I'm happy with my pose, I click on the green cross with the anchor. It will add an anchor in my timeline. It just added a specific key animation at that very moment. It gives you a huge freedom to influence the retargeting result as you wish. Now I will solve my animation again. It will blend the automatic animation with my manual correction. It just set with the anchor frame. I can readjust the animation as many times as I want using the same anchor frames on the entire padding block or in the session itself. Here, I made some additional adjustments. I will solve again. You have to solve after each anchor frame you place. 
Before we see the results, I just want to take a little time to explain to you the solving options. The first option lets you choose the starting and ending frame. It is related to the timeline. Then you can choose between two options for animation curves. First one is a smoothing. In case there is some noise in the animation, the noise often comes from the granular visual quality of the film. If you recorded low quality, pixels can duplicate and can be a little bit blurry. It can slightly influence your tracking as the software is pixel based. Your tracking can slightly shiver. Unfortunately, if your tracking shivers, your retargeting will shiver as well. To avoid this situation, you can add smoothing to the animation so that it looks more fluid. Be careful not to smooth too much so your animation doesn't look like it is floating. It is why I choose between 5 to 10% maximum. The option Use Curve Simplification lets you select how many key animations you want to send to the 3D software. If you do not select it, it will send raw data on your timeline. It will turn entirely red in Maya. Each red mark being an animation key for each frame, for each controller. It will become a bit tedious if you want to make changes or refine the animation by hand, for example. I check the number of animation keys I have in my entire scene. To do so, I go in the Windows menu in Maya, Animations Editor, Graph Editor. Solve again, moving the cursor to Medium Fidelity. Animation keys will be automatically replaced and timeline will be cleaned. You can see the difference. Here I have less animation keys. Sometimes people wonder if it is as precise as with raw data. You'll get the same curve with less points in the graph editor. You get the same result with less animation keys and you get lighter scenes. If you want to resolve and choose the number of animation keys per solver, like lower part, gaze or upper part, go to the advanced mode by clicking on the advanced button. Now I go ahead and solve. My animation now moves better according to the tracking and without the trickiest part. This part of the tracking got excluded by the padding block and fixed thanks to the anchor frames. You can influence the animation result even if it has not been tracked. You can still rework it. You can use it, for example, if an actor smokes a cigarette, drinks a glass of water, or yawns or things like that. Even if you lose the tracking, you can still use the reference to influence the animation of your character. Well, this is all, folks. You can now jump to our other advanced user tutorials, and if you need more information regarding these features, shoot us an email at support at